Not yet, ain't it? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Newman. Marcus. Been catching worms. Want to buy some? Uh, Henry, no. Now go on. You boys don't belong here. But... Go! Oh! Jim. Mr. Newman, you all right? Uh, are you working late, Jim? Well, yes, sir. What's that they say about a job worth doing? That's worth doing well. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what they say. I'm just trying to figure out who is this they they always talking about. I think... Mr. Newman? Shove off. You get him? Perfect. But now, if worse comes to worse, I still might need no, your butt. But... I can't do it more. I have a family. I'm scared. Thanks, Cosmo. You better go. I've got to shove off. Shove off! Get up, Mr. Karcher. Now! 
<laughs> Give me that. Blood. I heard Mr. Newman yelling. It's Newman's all right. You killed him. No. You killed him and threw him in the river. No, I was trying to help him. You helped him, all right. Helped him into the next world. I saw you. No, I didn't. You're going to hang. I'll tell you, you're like hell. I didn't do nothing. Still wet, Johnny. Mr. Blevins, my story. Was cut. I cut it. But why? You tell me. I quote, war was waged as city fathers fought viciously over the explosive issue of public gas lights. Tempers flared and the hot August night drew out the killer instincts of Alderman Conrad, who at one point seemed ready to lunge at the throats of all who opposed him. Then I was there. It was a friendly discussion. Not the way I saw it. This is what was really happening under the surface. Man. We gotta make people see the news. Feel it, hear it. Not like Howard Shipwreck article, look at this. Where's the excitement, the, the heat of the flames, the, the lurching of the decks? The way he writes, it looks like the victims were bored to death. If you just let me do a follow-up. Not until you learn the difference between fact and fiction. You can start by rewriting this story of yours. Tonight. Why didn't you tell me you were coming down? I, I don't... What's wrong? Look, I done got myself snagged. I'm in trouble. I mean, bad trouble. They think I killed a man. What? Mr. Newman was on the levee the other night in Hannibal. And something happened to him. Lyle Newman? I swear on the good book, I had nothing to do with it. But this guard, this Ali Carcher, he thinks I did. Jim, did you run? You oughtn't have done that. Well, if I hadn't, I'd be swinging in the wind just as sure as we speak. They can't do that. It's been 15 years since Miss Watson freed you. You're a freed man. You got rights. Same as anyone else. It ain't like that, Hook. I know it's supposed to be, but it, it just ain't. Jim, I can hide you out at my place, but you should think about turning yourself in. You ain't heard a word I said, have you? You're entitled to a trial. Well, just suppose it gets that far. Now, do you know a lawyer? I mean, a good lawyer would take a case like mine? I used to. The city of Chicago versus Neville Stevens Wainwright. Drunken disorderly conduct, theft by taking, Your Honor. Do you have counsel, Mr. Wainwright? Uh, Tom Sawyer for the defense. Uh. Your Honor, the accused left Carlton's Tavern last night, 
stole a two-horse wagon, and went on a reckless jaunt through the city streets. Mr. Wainwright caused hundreds of dollars in damage, and he endangered the lives of several pedestrians. It didn't happen that way, Your Honor. There were scores of witnesses. The way it started, my client was merely seeking a pleasant evening out at Carlton's Tavern. He was, uh, he was on his way home. He didn't want to overdo it. No, sir. Oh, but then... Then he saw it, and it was coming right towards him. Clippity, clippity, clop. It was a runaway wagon, and the horses were going wild. Now, he could have jumped out of the way, but no, Your Honor. Neville Stevens Wainwright is made of finer stuff than that. Your Honor. Shh, shh, shh. He threw caution to the wind, and he made a daring leap for the wagon. And he grabbed hold, and he pulled himself up slowly, bit by bit as the horses charged madly through the city streets. And then he grabbed the reins, and he tugged with all his might, doing all he could to keep that wagon in check. Your Honor, my client almost lost his life trying to save the good people of Chicago. And how's he thanked? By being thrown in jail and forced to stand before you here like some kind of common criminal. Your Honor, he took the wagon. Do you have any witnesses who actually saw him take it? Well, no, but it's obvious. Can you offer any conclusive evidence that disputes the defendant's story? Yes, miss. Congratulations. It's all your... If we're through here, I have an appointment at my tailor's. You know, maybe you would have liked it better spending the night in jail with all the drunks. And that's where you'd be right now if I hadn't gone all out for you. Well, I think I'd prefer their company to yours. They talk less. Well, I'd rather defend them than some spoiled, half-witted, upper-crust mama's boy any day of the week. office. Telegram from St. Louis. Urge an old friend needs help. Please respond at earliest convenience. Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry? What a name. Sounds more like a tree. Sawyer. Mr. Ringland. Bad move, Sawyer. Sir? Mr. Wainwright says you insulted his son. I don't need to tell you that Wainwright is one of our biggest clients. But I got the charges dismissed. That's nice. Now, go apologize to Wainwright's life. Oh, apologize? Fancy Martha Randolph, her dog bit another ice man. There may be a suit. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I've been doing these penny ante cases since I got here. You will do as you're told. And if I say no? I beg your pardon. Well, I hoped it wouldn't come to this, but, uh... I got an offer from another firm. I wasn't gonna take it. Not if I could start getting some better cases from your firm, but... Now, you don't give me much choice. Sawyer. Clean out your desk. I want you out of my offices now. You may fool a judge or two with your nonsense, but you don't fool me. Been. Don't know if it's been too long or not long enough. Got to think about it. Came awful quick. How's things been going for you over there? 
Well, I've been uh, stirring things up. Good stirring or bad stirring? <laughs> oh, good as good can get. They, they didn't want me to go, but I said, my friend Huckleberry needs me. I'll be back when I can. How's you? Big city reporter? <laughs> What's your nickname? Huh? Your nickname? All you big reporters got nicknames, don't they? Dash or Speedy? Some folks still call me the Stooge. Are you still mad about that? You are, aren't you? But that's why I haven't heard from you in the past three years. Faking your own killing and making it look like a work of some lost Indian tribe? <laughs> Just having some fun. Fun? You call it fun convincing a, a whole town that bloodthirsty savages are gonna murder them in their bed? <laughs> That was good, wasn't it? You made me look like a fool. I wrote your obituary and everything. Oh, it was beautiful writing, Huck. Oh, yeah, it was all one big joke to you, wasn't it? Here I thought I'd lost my best friend in the whole world. I wrote all those articles bound to find your killer or die trying. You've done all right for yourself since then. Yeah, now I'm doing fine. But back then, I had to fight to prove I wasn't the stooge you made me out to be. I had to stay in Hannibal two more years before anyone would take me seriously again. Huck, I didn't mean anything by it. You know, when I found out you were really alive, I had half a mind to kill you myself. Huck. Huck! Can't believe you're still mad about that. Well, believe me. But we have more important things to talk about. I'll tell you inside. Is this your place? Yep. Jim! There's been some trouble back home in Hannibal. Since I didn't see no other choice, I come here. Well, I can't really say I blame you, Jim. Tom, there's something else. The fellow they think Jim killed, someone you know. Tom? It was Lyle Newman. Becky Thatcher's husband? Lyle was an official with the Hawkins steamship line. <sighs> Becky always wanted someone to settle down. Stay put for her. Tom, you think you can do anything for him? Uh, I, I don't know. What don't you know? When Jim turns himself in... Now, hold on, Huck. I didn't say I was... Jim turns himself in, he's gonna need himself a lawyer. The closet. Uncleberry Finn? Yes, sir. I'm Deputy Phillips. Deputy? We got a wire from the Hannibal Sheriff. Says that a runaway Negro might be headed here to town. Supposed to be a friend of yours. A slave? No, a freed man. He's a killer, though. Dangerous. A dangerous killer? You didn't say nothing about killers around these parts. I'm headed back to Chicago. Oh, don't be silly. We'll lock the place up tight. Now, what I came here about... Yeah, but what if he breaks in and murders us in our sleep? Slits our throats, strangles us, smothers us dead. I was told oh, that... We'll take turns sleeping. The other will stand watch. If you let me explain... Yeah, Peter, I'm, I'm sure glad you're here. I feel much safer knowing... Listen to me! Now, like I said, this fellow's supposed to be a friend of yours. Friend of mine? I don't know no killers, I don't think. Jim Watson? Jim. Oh, yeah, I know him. I haven't seen him in a while. Mind if I take a look around? Well, go ahead and look, but there ain't much more than you see here. Uh, just a, a lot of junk in there. I never use it no more. It lost the key. What's that? Skeleton keys.
Well, looky here. Got him. Taking you back to Hannibal. Come on. Well? Well, what? Listen, you ain't my first choice for lawyer of the year. But for right now, you're the only hope Jim's got. Oh, I get it. Maybe you just don't like putting yourself on the line for something other than the glory of Tom Sawyer. Look, it isn't like that. When you were a boy and got yourself shot at the Phelps place, Jim stayed behind and helped you, even though he was a runaway slave. He risked his freedom for you. Everything you've ever done, all your little games and your adventures, Give a wit about anybody but yourself. I guess you haven't changed a bit. Look, it's just. How do you think Becky's gonna feel? Me coming into town to help the man accused of killing her husband. You're afraid. That's it, ain't it? I guess Tom Sawyer just ain't as good as he says he is. I ain't never been a quitter. And I ain't about to start now. I'm heading to Hannibal. You do what you want. Hawk. Jim may not have much going for him, but he's got himself a lawyer. Good enough for me. Let's go home. you ever did. Uh, look at you. I never could get this boy to dress himself proper. <laughs> no, look. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lucille. Good to see you. <laughs> Hi. Good to be back. Hannibal, Missouri. Friendliest place on earth. Tom. Tom! What was that for? That's for defending Lyle's killer. Now, where's that boy? What boy? The boy I'm looking after, Marcus. Uh, that couldn't be him, could it? Marcus! Nice to meet you, Marcus. I'm Huckleberry Finn. Call me Huck. I'll see you later, Marcus. See you, Henry. What's this bag business all about? Well, everybody knows why you're here, and they don't like it. The whole town thinks Jim did it. I was there that night. Henry and I saw everything. Wait, hold on. What did you see, Marcus? I don't want to hear no tales, no lies. One cockeyed untruth or even a half-truth out of you, I'll know. Because no one can spot a tricky liar faster than another tricky liar. You got me? I saw Jim running. Allie was chasing him. 
Allie was the guard. Is that all you've seen? Can I be a witness? <laughs> yeah, for the other side, maybe. Hey, it's Aunt Polly's old place. New owners have been keeping it up nice. The fence could use a coat or two. My neck crawlers? Marcus, take Tom and Huckleberry upstairs and show them their rooms. You can share my room, Huck. Your old room. Where are you headed? Over to Becky and Judge Thatcher's house. No need in putting this off. I'll go with you if it'll make it any easier. Thanks, but this is one I need to do alone. Being here sure brings back some memories. I used to crawl out this window sometimes after the winter thought I was asleep. That tree had come in mighty handy. Still does. <laughs> Where are your folks, Marcus? Never knew my mom. And my pa. About a year ago, fever got him. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, gold fever. Headed out west. Didn't think it'd be any place for me. So the winter took you in? Yeah. Do a lot worse for yourself. When my pap died, she raised me like her own. Don't know what I would have amounted to if it hadn't been for her. On it. Well, Tom put them in for me. I couldn't read it right back then. The widow taught me most everything I know, civilized. You want it? It's yours. Thanks. That'll be our little secret. Secret between friends. Remember, Marcus, a friendship worth having is worth having for life. Like you and Tom? to get back down to the levee. Take a look around. Visit the scene of the crime. I heard you were coming back. Becky. I'm so sorry. Sorry that my husband's dead? Or sorry that you're here to free his killer? Becky, Jim didn't kill anyone. You must really hate me, Tom. Whatever I did to you... You made your choice. I wasn't it, but that's all. It doesn't have anything to do with why I'm here now. Please, Tom, just go. Sorry, I can't do that. Why? Why do you have to do this? For Jim. Folks, got to see the man beyond the color of his skin. And don't you want me to find the man who did kill your husband? I want you to leave. Becky, I've got to see your father. No! Becky, just tell him I'm here. If he doesn't want to see me, he can say so himself. to figure out what really happened that night. Now, the guard says he caught Jim at the south end of the landing, right? Right. And the guard saw him from over there. Then he must have run down through here. The great Mephisto has arrived! I am here to offer my mystical powers to share my supernatural gifts with the good people of... Hannibal! Hannibal! I am... Mephisto, seer, psychic, medium, 
fortune teller extraordinaire for a small, I say, a very small fee. You too can have the benefit of my gifts. Four shows daily, consultations upon request. Excuse me. Young man, you seek my advice. I can sense that he is troubled in matters of the heart, perhaps. No, but ain't you the Duke of Bridgewater? Yeah, uh, uh, no. No, I am uh, Mephisto, seer, psychic. And ain't he the King of France? We'd met before. No, 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 sir. You, you're mistaking us for someone else. No. Oh, perhaps, perhaps we just look like these illustrious fellows. No, I'm sure. Excuse me, young man. Uh, these gentlemen that you refer to, uh, did they uh, cause you any physical or financial harm? Well, no. Good. In that case, you'll excuse us. We have important business to attend to. We will be here in Hannibal. 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 Just a few days. Can you really read people's minds? Oh, they're just a couple of con artists. Been working the river for years. <laughs> You're wasting your time. I just saw your black friend. Jim? You saw him? Yeah, they just brung him into town. He looked a little underdressed. Might need a necktie on him. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Henry. Where are you going, Huck? I wish I could say that it was good to see you, Thomas. I've always tried to look after you, see that you got the best kind of schooling, a position with a prestigious Chicago law firm. And now you repay me by showing utter contempt for my family. Contempt? Lyle Newman was my son-in-law. He was a good man, Thomas. Well, then isn't it important we know who his killer is? But why is it so important that you be the one to defend Jim Watson? Well, because I think Jim's entitled to the best defense he can get. Oh, oh. still arrogant as ever, I see. No, I, I didn't mean... I meant that as a compliment. But you have to choose your battles wisely. You've made a mistake here, son. I was just, I was sought. The truest and most equitable justice can only be served by the most rigorous conflict, an examination of opposing points of view. <laughs> Did you lift that double talk from some dusty old textbook, huh? No, sir. From you. Your commencement address at my graduation, Columbia, Missouri, May 1855. Not double talk. It's good words, sir. It's a dirty trick, using a man's own words against him. Sounds like something I might have done. I learned from the best. Ah, Becky. Becky, do you have any idea what your husband was doing on the docks at that hour? <clears throat> Nobody knows. Lyle was very busy with his work. He, uh, he'd been a bit preoccupied. Well, if it isn't Huckleberry Becky? Finn. Sir, they brought Jim into town. He's at the jailhouse. Oh, we, we better go. Well, go ahead. By all means. Huck has almost as much to gain from this as you do. It's a big case. Big headlines. No matter how it turns out, you two will make a big splash for yourselves. That's what you're after, isn't it? You can't believe that. your lawyer. Well, what brings you here? Well, I'm here to do whatever it takes to get you out of here, Jim. Huck's here, too. He's outside. They'd only let us in one at a time. What's the matter? You didn't think those St. Louis deputies are gonna bring me all the way back here without getting in a few licks now, did you? Jim, look, I've been asking, but... No one seems to know what Lyle Newman was doing on the levee that night. Do you have any idea? No, I don't. He was on to him around that time of night, but... You know, he was acting awful jumpy, though. 
Well, all I can say, Jim, is we're going to tear this town apart until we get to the bottom of this. I'm not going to let you hang. Tom. Did Huck Weedle and cajole you into coming back here? What if he did? Well, if he did, I'd be awful glad. I'm disappointed, Huck. The way folks are treating us, it's like we're lepers or something. They've changed. They haven't changed. How can you say that? They treated me the same way when I was a kid. Folks around town would have just as soon spit at me as look at me. My mom was dead. My pa was a drunkard. I didn't have nice clothes. I didn't go to school. Come on, Huck. It wasn't that bad. <sighs> oh, yeah. Forgot. If it didn't affect you, it must not have happened. You know, I am sick and tired of it. You are ripping into me every chance you get. Tom, Huck! saves our necks. Good work, Marcus. Well, one thing's for sure, someone doesn't want us nosing around. Come on. And in this, our hour of sorrow, let us not forget that God made both good and evil. On the one hand, we have good men like Lyle. And on the other hand, we have his cold-blooded killer, the devil's own henchman sent up from the halls of Satan to take Lyle Newman from us. Newman was murdered and thrown in the river, his body carried away without even the solace of a decent Christian burial. Are we going to stand idly by and allow Satan's follower to get away with his fiendish crime? No. As God's no. agents, no. it Come is on. our obligation, our sacred duty, to destroy such evil trail. forces in the world. I uh, truly believe that this horrible crime will not go Huck, unpunished. they're talking about hanging Jim. They're talking about lynching Jim. I say... What? No, one thing I remember about this old town, we sure know how to put on a right proper hanging. So what's your problem? My problem is you people. Would you forget how to do a hanging right? But it takes planning. Ain't something you can do spur of the moment, but not the way it should be done. Wait, Ben Masters, where's your mom at? Uh, at my aunt's at Constantinople. <laughs> See, if I remember right, no one enjoyed a good hanging more than Ma Masters. What's she gonna say when she comes home and finds out you've done it without her? Oh, she'd box my ears. <laughs> Charlie Keller. Now, see, I remember that little sister of yours, how she'd always make those, those pies and those cobblers and uh, those little sweet things. But what are they called? Crab apple cakes. Yeah, that's it. But I guess you folks wouldn't care about that. Yeah. And then I remember how we'd always have ourselves a big picnic afterwards, throwing horseshoes, singing songs. And of course, hanging day's always a holiday. We no, no school, no work. It just seems a shame to throw it all away. It don't seem right. It's sort of like having a wedding spur of the moment without no planning at all. But you folks don't feel like doing it upright and waiting to hang him till after the trial. 
I ain't gonna talk you out of it. I ain't gonna try. Go ahead. I suppose there's no harm in waiting. Minds are red. Destinies are revealed. For only two fits, afternoon special. The great Mephisto probes the subconscious. And for only two bits. Haven't lost your touch, I'll give you that. You know, but it's gonna take more than fast talk to save Jim. All right, you see this card here is the Joker of the deck, ladies and gentlemen. The card that brings us mirth and laughter. But this next card, the Ace of Diamonds. Here's where those men jump Tom and Huck. I bet I can track them down. You gonna do some detective work? Yep. I'll let you watch, but you gotta stay on my way. Oh, well. What's that? Flower, salt, and water. I'm making a cast. It's gonna take a while to dry. Tell me something, Jim. The night of Newman's murder, what were you doing down on the levee? Well, I just finished loading up my steamer to ISIS. All by yourself? <laughs> the ISIS wasn't even supposed to be there till the next day. I mean, nobody was expecting her. Just showed up? When she first pulled in, I thought maybe they'd had some trouble. I mean, our boats have been having a run of bad luck. What do you mean? Well, there have been some accidents around here lately. Yeah, we've been covering them in the paper back in St. Louis. Yeah, but the ISIS was fine, so I loaded her up, but only there was nothing to unload. Isn't that unusual? Well, it sure ain't normal. Fellow in Jefferson City makes them for me. I sold a pair to Ivy McCart. Old Lady McCart? She gave them to the preacher. The preacher? There has to be someone else. Well, I did sell a pair to Willie Dawes. Thanks. Marcus, what are you up to? It's a secret. You're making a mess. I'm going to get in trouble if my boss finds hey, out. Hey, hey, take it easy. It's fine. What's this? Newman's press file. Come on, careful with that stuff. These are all Hawkins' boats. There's one mishap after another. Please, I must ask you both to leave the premises or else. Say, hey, what's your name again? Biggs. Samuel Biggs. Was that with two G's or one? What's he writing my name down for? This is Hawk Finn. He's a big reporter for the St. Louis Herald. He's going to put your name in the newspaper. May even be a front page story. Right up at the top. Really? Now, can you tell us anything about a steamer called the Isis? Well, it carries all classes of freight. And it left just before Newman was killed, and it wasn't even supposed to be there. Am I right? Well, it wasn't scheduled to be there until the following day, so it wasn't here on company orders. On whose orders was it here? The captain's, I guess, Stephen Carswell. Where's he now? Can't say. Oh, sure you can. Just tell us where the ISIS might be. Well, Carswell isn't on the ISIS anymore. He resigned a few days back. Kind of strange. Sixteen years with the company, and he just up and quits. I appreciate your help. 
But more important, the readers will appreciate it. Biggs, it is Biggs. Samuel Biggs, with two Gs. Hey, hey, wait. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, when will my story be coming out? Both Newman and Carswell were down on the docks for reasons nobody knows. Kind of odd, don't you think? Yeah, strange this fellow would pick just this time to quit. I got this from Newman's employee file. Stephen Carswell's address. It's in St. Petersburg. What do you say we pay him a visit? Good idea. And I know just the way to get there. The two of us together again. Having another adventure. Floating down the river on a pine raft. Never thought I'd ever come back here. The whole time growing up, all I could ever think about was, was getting out. Is that why you almost didn't come back with me? No. no I can't blame it on that, Huck. No. I was scared. Down to my bones. I ain't never done anything this big before. I mean, getting drunks out of jail is, is one thing, but. Day after tomorrow, I have to go to a courtroom and fight for a man's life. And everyone, except you and I, are ready to string him up. You got more than you bargained for coming here, I know. But, Tom, the honest truth is there ain't nobody else I'd rather have at my side during all this. Wait, wait a second. Did you just say something nice to me? Did you? Oh, no! I know, I know. I've been riding you a bit. Those things I said were... You didn't really mean it. Oh, I meant them all right. Oh. But it's just your way, and it works for you. It took a lot of effort for me to stay mad at you for this long. The thing about you that riles me is the very thing that made you my best friend. You believe in yourself. And you do that better than anybody I know. <laughs> Thanks. I guess. This should be Stephen Carswell's place. Hey, wait a minute. Stephen Carswell? Who are you? I'm Tom Sawyer. This is Huckleberry Finn. May we come in? No. If you have any business with me, we can talk out here. Look, I, uh, I've been keeping up with the news from Hannibal. I know the two of you are trying to help Jim Watson. We think you know a lot more than that. What are you trying to say? We're not accusing you of anything. We, we know your boat left before Newman was attacked, but you and he were there at the same time that night. Why? I was bringing him some papers from the Hawkins main office in St. Charles. Bills of lading for some of our steamers, the ones that had the accidents. Newman was investigating the accidents? They weren't accidents. At least, Newman didn't think they were. I don't know what he was doing, though. He just had me steal the papers. What? He said he could make the accident stop. He told me to be very careful. That there were the very dangerous people mixed up in this. Looks like he was right. You've got to testify at the trial. Come back to Hannibal no, with I us. I can't do that. Ever since Newman got it, I've been living in fear of my life. Jim needs you. I'm taking my family east, away from all of this. We'll have you subpoenaed. You'll have to come. You'll never find me. And if you do, I'll deny everything I've told you. A man's life is at stake here. Look, I like Jim well enough. But you can't expect me to risk the lives of me and my family for a colored man.
Your father let me in. How nice of him. Uh, Becky, did your husband ever talk to you about the steamer accidents? Are you sure? Lyle never brought his work home with him. I'm sure there's a lot he didn't talk to me about. Like stealing papers from his own company? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I was hoping you could tell me. Thank you, Sarah. Seems your husband had some papers stolen from his company headquarters in St. Charles. Are you calling Lyle a thief? He had a ship's captain steal the papers for him. It was bills of lading, crew lists. Then why don't you question the captain? Well, we did, but he won't testify. Oh, oh that's grand. Assuming this mysterious person even exists, you'd blindly take the word of an admitted thief who won't even appear in a court of law. Your husband was on the docks to get the documents. Maybe Lyle was trying to find out what happened to those ships. Why steal documents from his own company? I mean, what? Who was he afraid of? Now, now think. You have some kind of gall. First you call my husband a criminal, and then you expect me to help you tarnish his good name. Oh, don't you see? Lyle's dead. There's nothing we can do about that. But Jim's alive, and he shouldn't have to hang to protect your husband's good name. Oh. It's all too clear. I once wounded the glorious pride of Tom Sawyer, and this is the way you get back at me. Is that what you think of me? You know, when you wouldn't marry me, it hurt so bad I thought I'd die. I mean, I, I was all ready to settle down, spend the rest of my life with you. Settle down? What kind of a fool do you take me for? For you. Becky Thatcher, I would have done anything. Get out. What? You are still quite the silver-tongued devil, aren't you? You will say anything to anybody to get what you want. Becky, no. Get out. Now. All right. I'll go, Mrs. Newman. But just remember, I didn't bring up the past. You did. And with all due respect to your husband's memory, I will find out what happened on the levee that night. this plan of yours, Huck. You got some funny ideas about who to trust. I don't trust anybody, but we ain't got any choice. I sure hope this works. Please concentrate on the object. You must concentrate. Mephisto, I hold in my hand the object. Are you receiving his thoughts? Are you receiving them clearly? Could it possibly be... Yes, yes, Mephisto. A billful. He's done it again. <laughs> He's done it again. The man has been like a genius. I think maybe they got a code worked out. The old guy said received him twice. Received is probably their word for billful. <laughs> I hold in my hand another object. Are you up to the challenge? I say the challenge. It's, it's, uh, oh. Oh, goodness. Oh. Mephisto, are you all right? I'm sorry, madam. I will not be able to identify your object. I just had another vision. Can you describe it for us? Oh, yes. It happened around here. I'm not sure whether it did happen or it will happen. I can't tell. But it was very dark and foggy. Near the water, a man is attacked. He's a slender man by the name of... Uh, 
Duly no one. That's it. Yes. And the man who attacked you is is that Negro? No, 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 no. I no, I don't. I don't think so. This is not a colored man. This is no someone else. Yes, I'm sure of it. This is someone else. This man's uh, face and name are fading from me. No, no, no. Tell us. I'm sorry, but this experience has tapped my energies. We have to know the trial's tomorrow morning. Stephen B., can't you see the man's exhausted? Yes, perhaps I've had some rest. Tomorrow I can describe the culprit's features and tell you his name before the trial. Oh. trying. I comb them docks over and over. Ain't none there. I hate loose ends, gents. And those papers are one big loose end that can hang all three of us. Maybe Newman throw them in the river. Oh, you want to risk your life on maybe, huh? How about you, Wesley? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Now, the only thing that links us to them accidents is those papers. Now, it'd look awful funny for us to bend the only stevedores on every one of them tubs that cracked up. Douglas said I might find you here. Well, it's, it's quiet. No one to bother me. The old swimming hole. You never swam here, did you? No girls allowed. I swam here lots of times. Me and Michelle Edison and Caitlin Lee. We used to swing from that very rope. When you and the other boys were. Becky, I'm sorry. Not, not just about this morning, but about everything. It's just... I lost my husband, Tom. I loved him. I know. That's why it's so hard for me to do this. Maybe. Maybe you'll know what to do. He's learning to study at home. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. I hid them away from everybody. Becky, these are plans not to 
build ships, but to wreck them. It looked that way to me, too. But I couldn't believe. I didn't want anyone to know. Why? Why would Lyle... I, I don't know, but... These plants. This is the Mariana. The Vivian. It's the exact same ships had the accidents. It's starting to make sense. Becky. It looks like Lyle had those bills of lading stolen because there was something in him he didn't want anyone else to see. Something could incriminate him. person I was closest to in all the world. And I didn't really even know him. Trying to help your friends, huh? I was just playing out here. No playing. You're playing games. I don't like games much. Not unless I win. He got some. Huh? Boy, he's holding some. What do you got there, boy? <coughs> nice. Thanks. You're gonna get yours. Mephisto saw one of you hurt Mr. Newman. Saw you in a vision. Whole town knows about it. What's this? Ah, just some foolishness. Well, you're not superstitious, are you? I don't know. Just relax. Even if there is something to it, he ain't seen anybody yet. Believe me, he's not gonna. How do you know? Well, let's just say I got a vision of my own. Get our friends. Come on out, he fell for it. He walked right into our trap. We would never, I say never, have allowed you to put us up to this. If I had known that we were going to spend the entire night in that abysmal pit, that, that dungeon, that oh, night. Nice, eh? Look what they did. First, they drive us from our home. Then they reduce our furniture to kindling wood. We'll make good on it. Now, you're going to tell us why you're here. Couldn't be that you thought that uh, Mephisto here was going to tell everyone that you killed Lyle Newman, could it? I ain't saying nothing. Did one of you boys lose this? Hey, isn't that, uh... I gave this to Marcus. You dropped this. Where'd you get it? I found it. Lion! What did you do with him? Excuse me, excuse me. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. <laughs> now, <clears throat> my good man, you are making me angry. You don't want to make me angry. Because when you infuriate me, you infuriate the entire spirit world. 
The last man who made me angry was Joe Novis. Joe Novis. And the fates cursed him with a lifetime of bad luck. And every disease imaginable. Tell him about the burning. Ah, yes. What? The burning. First it started in his feet. It felt like they was on fire. Then it moved up into his chins, then into his thighs, into his chest. Then it moved up into his head. And the folks said they could see his hair singe. And for every moment of every day for the rest of his life, Joe Novus felt like he was a blazing. You better tell these young men what they need to know, or you will suffer the same cruel fate. Where's the boy? The old brick place. Anybody guarding him? I ain't saying no more burning or no burning. <clears throat> I gotta get to the trial. Tell you what. You two, take this fella to the sheriff's office. Have a couple of deputies meet me out at the Debrecht place. Tell him to hurry. I'll be waiting outside, but I won't wait long. <sighs> Don't figure? Biggest case of my life, and I'm dead to the world. Just do what you do best. <sighs> I believe in myself? I do. Good luck, Tom. You too. Do you smell something burning? Tell you how sorry I am. Mrs. Newman? Tom. Morning, Jim. That depends on where you're sitting. All quiet. All quiet. People versus Jim Watson. The Honorable Judge Cochran presiding. All rise. Dumbfounded boy, the jury will get the idea you don't know what you're doing. You think I need help, Judge? Hell no. I just wanted to get a good seat. A point of order, Your Honor. Yes, Counsel. Defense moves for a continuance. On what grounds? Some new evidence has come to light, Your Honor. Counsel, approach the bench. What new evidence? Your Honor, uh, Wesley Kramer was apprehended this morning trying to murder a man who calls himself Mephisto. Now, Mephisto had claimed that he could expose Lyle Newman's killer. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Have you established a definite link between Kramer and this case? No, sir, not yet. But if you could grant us the continuance... Motion is denied.
understand this waiting around. Seems like all we've been doing. Wait. Just wait to cry. Just don't like it. Can Wesley be getting back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just been getting in deeper and deeper. I say we cut our losses and head out of town. Just shut up, will you? You're getting on my nerves. So after you heard the yelling, what did you do? Well, I looked and I saw them both down on the landing, wrestling around. Lyle Newman and this man, the defendant, Jim Watson? Yeah. Well, I ran down there, but I was too late. Jim had already killed Newman, dumped him in the river. Objection, Your Honor. Conjecture and speculation. Please confine your testimony to what you actually saw, Mr. Karcher. Well, tell us, what did Jim do when you confronted him? He attacked me. He attacked you. And then what? Then he ran. He ran. Thank you, Mr. Karcher. Your witness. Mr. Karcher. Uh, Allie. You say you saw Jim attacking Lyle Newman. Now you saw them from the boardwalk. They were on the landing. Now, how far were they from you? Oh, I don't know, reckon. 40 feet, 50. Or 75? Maybe. It's about 75 feet. Now, Allie, were you wearing your glasses that night? I sure was. You were. Were you wearing your glasses at the turkey shoot last fall? Yeah. Well, you didn't do too well, did you? It's tough, I know, trying to pick off a... A bleached white bird, 50 feet, sunny day. What was your problem? Objection irrelevant. But let, let me make my point. Um, make it fast, Counselor. You had a good excuse, didn't you? Uh, tell us. Tell us what you told everyone there. Couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. Now, now why couldn't you see it? You had an excuse for that, too, didn't you? Your Honor. But isn't it true you said several times I need new specs. But tell me if I'm wrong, Allie, but I, I think most of the folks here heard you say that. I said it. So, Allie, tell me. Did you ever get new specs? Well, no. No. So with those specs, you couldn't see a bleached white bird in broad daylight at 50 feet. How could you tell it was Jim on the landing on a dark, misty night at 75 feet? Oh. I ran down there. I seen him up close after you were on the landing. But you never actually saw Jim touch a hair on Lyle Newman's head, did you? And when you did see him, don't you think it was possible that maybe he was there for the same reason you were, to help him? Well, it seemed like... It seemed like is a far cry from definitely. But if you'd gotten there first, it might have seemed to someone else that you killed him. Me? Objection. No further questions. What's going on? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> go check it out. Go on, go on. I'll stay with them. Did you see that one? doing up there? Breaking in my new slingshot. Hey, you want to come up and try it? All a man needs to be happy is a good slingshot, a sunny day, and a lofty perch. You come with me. Right, just as soon as I'm finished here, I still have a few more stones left. Now! Is that any way to talk? I said you could try it if you wanted. 
Get up from there, or I'm gonna... Does the defense wish to call any witnesses to the stand? Yes, sir. The defense calls Jim Watson. So you see, I had to run. I mean, I was scared. Mr. Carter said he's going to hang me. And I did not hurt him. I, I just sort of pushed past it. Jim, did you know Lyle Newman? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, I did. And would you describe your dealings with him as... Friendly? <laughs> Mr. Newman gave me my job down there. I mean, nobody else would give me a chance, but he said I should be able to prove myself just like anybody else. And isn't it true that some of the other dock workers threatened to quit unless you were fired? Yes, sir. They didn't like me down there. But there are lots of my sort around, but they ain't freed men, you see. I am. And those fellas didn't like that one bit. They said either I went or they would. And that's when Mr. Newman stepped in for me. He said they could go for all he cared. So that as long as I pulled my weight, I was staying. And what happened? I pulled my weight. I stayed and they got used to me. So what you're saying is that Lyle Newman alone was responsible for you having that job of yours. Without him, you could have lost it. That's right. You depended on him for your very livelihood. Your Honor, he's leading the witness. You, of all people, had everything to lose by his death. Your witness. Thank you. You've been in trouble with the law before, haven't you? Haven't you? Wasn't my fault. Isn't it true that you've been convicted on assault charges once before? Oh, uh, yeah. But the truth well, is that you attacked one Horace Clampett over a special work assignment. Isn't that right? No, he came after me first. Like I told you before, them other workers didn't want me down there. Mr. Newman gave me a new job, and Mr. Clampett thought it should have gone to him. Now, he's the one that started all that mess. After that, it was hard for you in the docks, wasn't it, Jim? Well, yeah, they were all gunning for me after that. And you resented Mr. Newman for turning your co-workers against you, didn't you? That's why you killed him, isn't it? No, I didn't. Objection, Your Honor. He's putting words in my client's mouth. Sustained. All right. All right. Let's talk about the night of Newman's murder. What were you doing on the docks? I was working. I was putting away the tackle rigs. Working? Huh. Well, putting time was three quarters of an hour before. I wanted everything finished. I take pride in my work. Oh. And I suppose the lazy white dock workers don't. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. You say that Newman called out. You say you ran to help. I say that because it's so. Do you recognize this, this wallet? Well, it looks like Mr. Newman's. It is. And you should know, because you took it from him, didn't you? No, I picked it up. Just like you picked up his blood on your hands? Did you not kill Lyle Newman, take his billfold, and throw him in the river? No. So you say, but give us one reason we should take the word of a man with such a history of violence. Your Honor, objection. Sustained. We've gone way beyond the realm of reasonable doubt. There is none. Jim Watson killed Lyle Newman. Objection. Fowler, where are you? Fowler! Get in there.
Get over there. Mr. Newman! I'm not telling you anything. What are you talking about? And none of us would even be here if you hadn't got cold feet. Nobody was supposed to get hurt on those ships. It couldn't be helped. Now, if you just tell us what you did with those papers, we could put all this behind us. If I did that, there'd be no reason for you to keep me alive. <laughs> Marcus is right. I'm afraid we were behind those accidents. I can explain everything. Explain later. We gotta get to Jim's trial before it's too late. We've got to go to the Levitt first. Glad you fellas could drop in. The papers have been here the whole time. If you wanna hide something, just put it in plain sight. Come on. As there are no further witnesses, I will now ask the defense to present its closing arguments. Give it your all, Tom. Just hope to God they believe you. The prosecution has no real proof whatsoever. None. Their only witness admits he can't see more than 30 feet in front of him in broad daylight. And Lon Newman was struck down some 75 feet away in the black of night. Now, gentlemen, the prosecution's case isn't about facts. It's about circumstance. And circumstances have a way of making things look different than the way they really are. Think about your, your weather vane. OK, you want to you know which way the wind is blowing, you look up points away. Fine. But what happens when the vein ices over in winter or, or when it rusts? It points the wrong way. Now, it may not happen often, but, but it can happen. Circumstance, just like this case. Now, I know that you're bringing a lot of notions in here with you. Notions about colored folks and white folks being able to work and live together side by side. But are the good people a Hannibal willing to string up an innocent man just because of the color of his skin? Now, I've been in places where folks would do just that. I met people in Chicago who'd stab you for a dollar as much as look at you. People who live their lives pushing and shoving, angry and bitter. But the people here aren't like that. The people I remember from my hometown would look inside their hearts and find Jim not guilty. It's Newman! <laughs> Willie Dawes attacks me. He wanted these. Papers that connected the steamer accidents with him. Kyle Fowler and Wesley Kramer. Newman was in on it, too. I'm not proud of it. Forgive me, Becky. I got greedy. I was trying to arrange a buyout with some investors in New York. I, I thought that if I rigged some of those ships with the help of those three men, I could weaken my company's position, bringing the selling price down. But when people started to get hurt, I, I tried to stop it. And that's when they attacked me, took me away, and tried to make me tell them whether papers were. Lyle, I'm going to have to take you in. No. Take the stick. Circle around back. He's out here somewhere. Jim! Jim! 
Don't do it. I ain't no murderer. Take these off him. This town needed a good healthy dose of Tom Sawyer. That Hawkins steam line was smart to hire you. Yeah, they were, weren't they? <laughs> Arrogant as ever. I hear you'll be keeping pretty busy yourself, Judge. Yes, I'll be representing Lyle at his trial. Perhaps you ought to come back and see it. You might learn a trick or two you haven't figured out before. <laughs> Arrogant as ever. <laughs> Becky? Becky, uh, I'm sorry about the way things worked out. Lau made some terrible mistakes, but he needs me now more than ever. Well, if you ever need me, I'd still do anything for you, Becky. I know you would, Tom. I was wrong about you, wasn't I? I know what I want to say, Tom, but thank you just don't seem to be enough. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim. I'm proud to call you my friend. Well, from sunrise to sunset and back again, you'll always be my friend. Yes, madam. I think we can arrange a meeting with your husband. But he passed away 15 years ago. That's no problem at all, dear lady. No, for a small, a very small fee, the great Mephisto could break down the walls between the here and the hereafter. Well, I'll be working in New Orleans, but my new job will be taking me up to St. Louis quite a bit. So I'll be looking in on you. Hey, see this? I still think you need a nickname. I'll work on it. Uh, never mind. I have a feeling the whole world's gonna remember Huckleberry Finn. See you soon, Judge. Bye. Have a safe trip. 